What's going on guys? This is Mike from Michael Anthony Photography in Los Angeles and I want to thank you for checking out my article in Shutter Magazine. Guys, I was really, really excited because this was my first article that I had the opportunity to write in Shutter Magazine and there's a lot of information that I would love to go ahead and share with the, with the general public and, uh, and photographers who are interested in hearing from me. Uh, this month, guys, I was talking about the challenges that photographers face during the bridal prep session on a wedding day. Now, let's be honest, the entire wedding day can be challenging and I feel that breaking it down into sections can always make things a little bit easier. So one thing I do when I walk into a bridal room, uh, be, besides, of course, you know, introducing myself to the brides and the bridesmaids, is I'm looking at the light as soon as I walk in. Generally, when you walk in, there's going to be tungsten lights on, or I'm sorry, incandescent lights on, uh, a whole bunch of clutter everywhere, and it's kind of our job to police the room a little bit and just kind of start putting things off to the side and clearing the area that we're going to be working working in. Um, a lot of times people can be nervous to just go ahead and ask the bride if they can move some clutter into the corner of the room. But by doing that, you're going to give yourself and your clients a much better result. Uh, also, when you walk in there, I like to take the approach that if we go ahead and subtract all the light from the room and then just go ahead and add what we need back in, we're going to have a much better final result. So generally, that's what I'll do. I'll turn off all of the ambient light in the room if there's any uh, electrical lights on, and then I'll go ahead and look for the largest, softest light source I can. Usually, it's going to be a large window. Um, sometimes in a room where there's no windows at all, we have to go ahead and set up our own lights or create a light source too, and I'll talk to you about a, a few different ways to do that. But if we can find that large window, then we can usually use the curtains or the shades as a, uh, a kind of a natural light modifier, if you will, that we can use to be able to shape the light as we need. Uh, I generally prefer to make my subject the brightest part of the picture and by doing that I'm always looking for darker backgrounds to, um, to photograph against. So by taking out the light in the room and then maybe creating a small slit of light with the curtains it allows me to have a much better final end product in terms of lighting. Now let's say you walk into a room and I don't know um, how many of you have done this before but you walk into a room and there's just no light at all there's no windows uh, what are you gonna do at that point well there's a couple options for you okay I always talk about being prepared on a wedding day, bringing, bringing as much gear as you think you could possibly need and the reason I do that is because I would rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it and uh, there's a couple things that you can do. So if you have a large light modifier, like a softbox or just a shoot through umbrella or something like that, that's a great light source. That, that is something that you can use in a variety of different ways. But let's just say you don't have any of that. How about just bounce flash, right? And I don't mean bouncing the flash up on the roof and letting it come back down on your subjects. A couple things that we can do, we could put a light on a, a light in the corner of the room, bounce it off the corner. We can usually, uh, one of the ways to create some really beautiful light using bounce flash is just by turning your flash degree either 90 degrees left or 90 degrees right, depending on which way your subject is facing. Doing that will give you a really, really beautiful end result. Try it on TTL mode and see what I'm talking about. Guys, the next thing that I want to talk about a little bit is taking your subject out of a clutter-filled room. So have you guys ever walked into a bridal room that's just super small and there's like nine bridesmaids in there and mom and the makeup artist and, you know, the dog and everything else, right? I have for sure and uh, it's, it's gotten me stressed out a couple of times. So what do we do in situations where the surroundings aren't just pretty? Are we going to photograph the clients against a messy background? Uh, I would say no. Um, one thing that I'll try to do is I'll try to take them out of that room or that, uh, that environment. And I don't mean physically. I mean compositionally. So we can use things to frame the subject, to shoot through. And I talk about this in my article using um, semi-translucent objects. So something like this, a, uh, a simple glass, when you have a light source that is coming um, from the opposite side of your camera and it's shining through the light, shining through the glass, it'll light it up and create a really nice effect that you can then go ahead and shoot through. Um, if you position the object right, you'll actually be able to frame your subject and create a really, really beautiful end result. If you use objects that have color in it, it also will help you create a very, very beautiful end result. This trick also works with water. So if you want to backlight your, your water, you'll also have a really, really beautiful end result, similar to what you guys see with those shots where people are out in the rain and, uh, and the speed light is from behind them. So you'll get that similar effect just using glass, beer bottles, wine bottles, anything like that. It works really, really well. And guys, the last thing I want to talk about real quick is defining your signature style. In my article, I talk about making sure that you get that signature shot of not just the bride and the groom, but also of just the bride by herself. The bride has spent so much time picking out her dress and all of her details. And for us not to photograph it, it's just a wasted opportunity. So 
taking the bride outside, finding some good architecture. Maybe you keep her inside and you just find some beautiful light, but you have to do something to go ahead and showcase that bride alone on her wedding day in a signature way that is not gonna look like your competitors. Everything that I do in my studio is about giving me the advantage over the other competitors in my local market. Uh, if my bride isn't finding something different about my work, why would she pay more money for me than somebody else? So I always try to find different ways, whether it be using light or creative post-production or just blending architecture and, uh, and my subjects, I always try to find a way to create something different and unique. And by doing that, I think you guys will have a great, a great result. Guys, in the future, I'm gonna to talk to you a lot more about creative use of light, off-camera light on the wedding day, how to light a reception room, and I can't wait to, uh, to have the opportunity to do that. Thank you again for checking out my article, and I'll catch you guys next month.